What's going on everyone? It's Gendo here and welcome back to the Higher Tempo Press YouTube channel and today we're going to take a little break from our Legends Managers experiments. We're going to dive right into new managers at new clubs. The first one we're going to take a look at is Marcelino at Valencia. Now, fans of Spanish football may have heard of Marcelino at least once over the last 30 years as he's both played and managed within the Spanish football system. He's both played and managed for Sporting Gijón and Racing Santander, and his most recent managerial stop was at Villarreal, where his most notable achievement was getting them to the semifinals of the Europa League just two seasons ago. But he hasn't really done much of anything at any of his other managerial stops, so this is a bit of a curious hire by Valencia. Don't know exactly what he's going to be doing in this offseason or how he's going to take the team going forward but with the magic of football manager let's see how he gets on with Valencia. So I set the start date of this experiment to the 1st of June 2017 because his initial hiring date, his real life hiring date of the 11th of May was still going on during the end of last season. So I wanted to give him a clean slate, a whole new season for him to work with without worrying about the end of last season and that's what we've done here. Take a look at some of his stats, I've never seen him before. He looks fairly competent as a coach, especially on the mental side. 18 determination, 19 discipline, 16 motivating, 16 tactical knowledge. Those are fine numbers to have at those stats. And taking a look at his coaching attribute side as well, above average for pretty much everything except for goalkeepers, which I wouldn't expect him to be a goalkeeping coach in the first place, but 18 tactical, 13 technical, 14 mental, that's great. His preferred formation is a 4-4-2, playing style mix, tactical coaching style, as you've seen with his attributes over here. Playing mentality of adventurous might be a little dangerous, especially within the Spanish system, but we got to wait and see exactly how that plays out. He doesn't really have any other formations. He just likes to play 4-4-2 all the way through. Let's zoom ahead one year and see how Marcelino gets on. All right, so we fast forwarded just a little over a year. It's the 17th of June, 2018. And let's take a look and see how Marcelino got on and he's no longer manager. What happened? Hold up, wait a minute. He's no longer manager of Valencia. Let's take a look at his history, the achievements. Yeah, 1st of June, 2017, that's when I put him in. But the 15th of March is when he was sacked as Valencia manager. Let's take a look at some of his overall competition setup. He got knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey to Sevilla, and then in the Europa League, he gets knocked out in the second knockout round to Sporting Lisbon. I, I, I want to take a look and see how he fared in the league to get knocked out at that point in time. Let's look at the schedule, and let's take a look at uh, just La Liga in general. So he, he started out decently, two wins and two draws, especially a draw versus Barcelona. That's great right there. But then three straight losses, to Madrid, Sevilla, Atletico didn't really help him all that much. And he's been bouncing up and down the league, getting a lot of wins, a couple of draws here and there, a few losses. I don't see how this is sackable. Maybe right here, this these three straight losses, once again to Sevilla, Atletico, and Real Madrid. Maybe that was a sackable offense. He got, he got sacked on the 15th of March which is right in between Sociedad and Elche. So that was right after a Sociedad loss. Maybe it has something to do with the Copa del Rey? I don't know. No, see, Copa del Rey was long before, and he just got blasted by Sevilla 5-1 on aggregate. So it wasn't the Copa del Rey. Was it the Europa League that killed him? It was. He got knocked out by Sporting 1-0 on aggregate. And that was eventually what led to his sacking. So it wasn't that he was doing poorly in the league. Valencia did end up in seventh, but it was just how poorly he did in the Europa League. I guess the board expected him to do so much better in the Europa League. I mean, the Europa League group that he had wasn't all that easy to begin with. Club Bruges, Legia Warsaw, and FC Sion. Okay, that was probably the easiest one out of them all. But yeah, he went and got five wins out of that group. He stomped on Krasnodar 5-1 on aggregate before losing to Sporting. That is very, very unfortunate. So let's take a look at some of the transfers that he made to justify his sacking and this position of Valencia. And he only brought in four players, the first one being Murillo from Atletico Paranense, a 19-year-old Brazilian striker for 450,000 euro. Doesn't look like he got much playtime, but it, I guess it was a developmental project for him. 
Fabian Oriata from Celta Vigo for 3 million, 32 year old, right attacking mid. It did look like he got some play time for the club. Guilherme Siqueira from Atletico Madrid, 1.3 million euros. Also looks like he got himself a lot of play time for the club. And then Vicento Grifo from Freiburg cost the most, 10 and a quarter million euros. And it looks like he did a lot of damage for Valencia, scoring 11 goals and 37 appearances. So not bad, all summer transfers. Let's take a look and see who he sold off to justify bringing in these players. And the first one that jumps out, big name selling, Joao Cancelao, or Cancelo, got sold out to Man City for 28 million euros. That is amazing. He's only 24 years old, and I guess they want to cash in on him sooner rather than later to try and use that money to bring in some players. Doesn't look like it helped out all that much. A lot of loans, a lot of incidentals. Ander Kappa sold to Atletico Bilbao for 2.7 million euros. Nando to Sporting Gijón for 1.2. And yeah, more and more loans. So it's just he didn't do much in the transfer window to justify pretty much anything at this point in time. The only big thing that he did was selling Joe Cancelo out to Man City. But he didn't really utilize that money uh, to fill defensive needs, apparently. He brought in a lot of attacking players, especially Vincenzo Grifo, who got himself 11 goals, but defensively it looks like is where Valencia needed the most help. Wow, not even a season before the board gave him the sack. I guess that their expectations were just a little too lofty for Marcelino to handle. He didn't do too terribly bad though in either the cup or the league. Europe did kind of end up being shaky in the end, but I thought that they would have given him maybe a season and a half, maybe give him another transfer window just to turn it around and fit players into his system, but the board were just too heavy-handed, and out goes Marcelino. Anyway, guys, Valencia fans, please let me know in the comment box below what you thought about this experiment. Do you think in real life Marcelino is going to do a lot better than what you saw here in this experiment? And for everyone else, please leave in the comment box below any future experiments you'd like to see on this channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Higher Tempo Press YouTube channel. I've been Gendo. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care and peace out.